Hey there guys, we're going to be going back to Thalassa for another rank 1 clear. This time we're going to be using some alternate units from my first clear. And now I've got a turn chart and all that for you guys to follow. So we're going to turn on all the modifiers. And we swapped it up from the original team. Now I do feel like my original team is a lot better, a lot stronger, a lot easier to get it done. But um, <coughs> we're going to try to make it a little bit more budget. So we're still going to use Aang because Aang is just really good here. Um, we're going to swap Abigail for Elena. That's a very big downgrade. If you do have Abigail, Abigail is way better for this than Elena. Like, oh my lord. Elena is actually, as it turns out, a little bit squishy against this boss, but it's fine. Melissa we're still going to use because she's amazing. Hopefully you've chosen her from the unit of choice if you don't have her yet. Um, we're going to be swapping out Hayo for Rikt. Uh, again, Hayo is better here. Rikt is just like an older unit, slightly more budget. <clears throat> and we're going to be swapping out um, Chow for Aya. Um, again, Chow is a better unit here because Chow is a natural water unit. A lot higher damage, but Aya is a viable swap. And we're going to be swapping Popoi for Metsi. Like I talked about, Popoi and Metsi are a totally fine swap. As you'll notice, my Metsi is only EX1. It's all you need. It doesn't matter. Okay, let's get in here and do an all modifier clear. I'll explain it as we go. So for this one, we're going to be killing on turn 8. We're going to be bursting on turn 7. But as I know from testing, this team is not as strong as the last one. And we're not going to OTK it. So we're going to do a turn 8, turn eight kill, but a turn 7 burst. <clears throat> okay. So to start off, a lot of auto casting, of course. So we're going to use Aang to... Uh, do it differently than my first clear. We're going to end Wardaga. He's our only water imbue. Then we're going to do Clear Sun and Roiling Mist. Ayabrea will do Barrier, Gene Heal, and Haste. Metsy will do his Magnus Field. The um, You're the one who should be praying. And then we'll just hit the boss twice with Absolute Mirror. Uh, Rikt will use his Shifted Radiant Protection. And then just Absolute and Bolting Strike. Melissa is going to do Chronic Flow, Parasol Shield, and Minutes of Might. Andy Lena is going to do on turn one. We're going to cover, <coughs> we're going to provoke, and we're going to Shelga. So, we are going to take a little bit of damage on turn one. It's going to be a little bit painful. It shouldn't be too bad. If anyone's dying, you got to adjust your gear, get more bulk, but it should be for the most part fine. Yeah, we have like four, four to seven thousand damage. No big deal. Just make sure you're, you know, properly geared using your mitigations and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so for this turn, we're going to use Elena's LB for the mitigations. We're going to use Aang to do Morning Dew. Uh, look at my turn chart. Morning Dew, Awaken Divinity, and we're going to do Placid Concentration. We're going to do a small burst next turn. Ayabrea will do Morning Dew. Um... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Wrong person. Aya and Aang with the same on my turn chart. No, Aya's going to shift, and we're going to do Awakened, and then just double bolting. So Awakened and double bolting. Uh, Metsy is going to do Let's Get Started, which is the breakdown here, and then uh, just bolting strike twice, or bolting absolute, doesn't matter. Um, Rick is going to go to the base form, and then for morale, even though the killers don't matter, we're going to use Light Within for the morale gain, and then absolute and bolting strike. And then Melissa is going to do Shared for the Resistance buffs, Bar Darkja, and we're going to do a Protectga. Now, for the next few turns, Elena is going to be getting hit relatively hard. Um, if she's dying, you got to add more bulk some kind of way. Um, if she's surviving, you're fine. Yeah, as you see, we took, like, I'm not sure, you know, with the barrier, a big chunk of damage, but she's still at 40% health, so we're okay. As long as you're not dying, you're good. Okay, so for this turn, Elena will now just refresh the cover. And we'll just do absolute and bolting to uh, replenish her LB gauge. We're going to have Melissa do Dragon Killer on Aang. So, Dragon Killer on Aang. We're going to do Beast Killer on Aang. And we're going to do Human Killer just for the morale gain. Uh, let's see. So now we're going to do a little bit of a bursting. This is not going to be nearly as good of a burst as our first clear, but it'll still be fine. So Aang is going to either SLB 
or regular LB. If your Aang is only EX2, it is fine. Just use the regular LB. This is not the main burst. Ayabrea will do the shifted LB. Metsi is going to either use his LB or his SLB. Again, if you're not EX3, like mine, the regular LB, totally fine. And if your LB is not filled by now, just, you know, on the earlier turns, use his LB fill Magnus. Um, and then Rift will go to the shift form. We want to do the shifted LB here because his sword in peril is not up yet. So shifted LB on Rick. Go ahead and chain this up. And this will maybe push the 80 threshold, maybe not. If it does or doesn't, it doesn't matter. We hit exactly 80, it's fine. That means the boss is going to heal. If we didn't push that 80 threshold, the boss would not heal this turn. Um, but again, it doesn't matter. E either way, you, you push it, you don't. It's not that important. Anyway, we did push it, but the important thing is we're in Mania mode at this point. So we are now in Mania mode. we got to push it on turn 3 for this strategy. So because we did push the 80 threshold, the boss healed. And because, <coughs> because we pushed the threshold, the boss has an attack power buff, which is why he's hitting so hard on Elena. It actually maybe would have been slightly better to not push that 80% threshold, because then he wouldn't have had an attack power buff. And Elena wouldn't have been hit as hard. But... As long as she survives, you're good. You're good. She survives, we're fine. Um, okay, so now we're in Mania mode. So we're going to use Aya Brea. Now, for this strategy, you got to have a minimum of one Focus Plus unit and one regular Focus unit for this strategy specifically. So for this one, Aya Brea is our regular Focus unit. So we'll go to the base form and use Focused Energy. And then Metsy is our Focus Plus unit. So Focus Plus Energy. And again, some alternatives are like Avalanche Tifa is a Focus Plus unit, um, stuff like that. You know, I don't want to use my Blue Pearls on Avalanche Tifa, so therefore my Tifa is not Neo Plus. Um, you know, Blue Pearls are a little bit scarce. Uh, but, you know, as long as you've got some kind of mix and match of Focus and Focus Plus in the team, you're fine. You could also swap out, like, for example, Elena, bring in, like, a JP tank. That'll give you another source of Focus, all that kind of stuff. Anyway... So turn four, we are now going to um, use... I should have done this first, but it's fine. So Aang is now going to use Impaling Arrow, Cleansing Arrow. This is going to perfect dispel the boss's buffs away. And then we're going to do Inwardiga. So we need to do this before using Melissa. That is very critical because we do not want to perfect dispel away the imbue that we're about to do on the boss. Now Melissa is going to three-turn Dark Imbue the boss with all-consuming darkness. And then we'll just refresh Shelga and Protectga. Rikt can just go to the, sh bait, the shift form and just absolute and bolting. Not a lot for him to do here. And Elena will um, just Curega three times. So uh, Curega three times to heal up. Something wrong on my turn chart. Let me fix that real quick. Okay, fixed. Anyway, so a little bit of damage right here. We are in Mania mode. It's going to be a little bit painful. Um, this, this actually might not be the painful turn. I don't really remember, completely honest here. Uh, one of these turns are painful, though. It's probably not this one. I don't know. But in any case, all the physical damage is now negated because of Melissa. So, And the dark damage is, too. Uh, yeah, that wasn't too bad. You know, whatever. Now, we did Mirage right there, but it's not really important because, like I said, uh, we have the boss imbued. So, e even if the boss had hit us, it wouldn't matter. Um, so, now we're on turn five. So, turn five, we're going to go ahead and use Melissa's SLB, but not yet, not yet. Before we do anything, we're going to use Metsy to do Hetcha, the cooldown. Then we're going to do Get Started and Absolute Mirror of Equity. Ayabrea will, just for the morale gain, will do things like Barrier, Gene, Heal, and Haste. Uh, Aang will start getting set up for the bursting. So we're going to do Clear Sun, Rolling Mist, and now we're going to do Hunter of the Mystical up here for the bigger Dragon Killer. Rikt will do, let's see here, Leading Legend. We'll do Moment of Weakness, and we'll do Bolting Strike. Melissa is going to SLB. It doesn't really matter who you target. We'll target Aang for the fun of it. It doesn't really matter. Um, and then we'll do the LB of Elena as well for the mitigations. <coughs> okay. 
So we do have healing down on Elena, so we, she's not fully healed, but you know, with barriers, with bulk, with mitigations, it's, it's going to be fine for the most part. Okay, so some more attacks on the boss. Next turn, we will have the focus gauge filled up to the maximum, and we'll start up. We'll start our setup for doing our our damage cap. It's not going to kill the boss unless we get like a high variant control, but it'll probably not kill the boss on turn seven. That's fine. We have three turns to get to get a finish in, so it's not going to matter. So some attacks here. Um, a lot of dark damage. We're uh, we're immune to it right now. Uh, some imperils, etc. It doesn't matter. You know, the boss is the boss is a nothing. Okay, so we're going to get set up for killing next turn. So Aya Brea is going to shift here. We're going to do Awakened for the modifier buff, and then just double bolting. Now, don't do anything cute like, you know, Necrosis, because you might think like, oh, the boss is going to heal next turn, we want a Necrosis. Uh-uh. That'll perfect the spell the bosses imbue away, and we do not want that. Do not Necrosis. Don't be trapped. Um, so we'll just Awakened and double bolting. Ang is going to do the Vertex ability, so we're going to Enduring Love. We're going to 180 Amplify with Poised, and then we're going to um, Awaken Divinity for the Modifier buff. I hate Modifier buffs, but we got to do it. Uh, now, we're going to use Metsy's SLB here. Um, that's because we want to put up that Imperil and the bigger 89 breaks ahead of time. Also, he's not going to be using Bolting on the kill turn, so we want to go ahead and get the SLB done right now. Uh, Rick again, not much to do for Rick, so we'll just like bolt in and double absolute because whatever. And again, do not use dispels, do not use radiant protection, that will get you killed. Uh, Eli or Melissa will now parasol. We're going to beast killer on Ang, so beast killer on Ang, and we're going to dragon killer on Ang. And Elena on this turn can refresh cover. And then just bolting and absolute to refill the LB gauge. Okay, so some more attacks this turn. Um, it shouldn't be too terribly painful. I don't think this is a hard turn. I don't remember. There's very few dangerous turns on this fight. Yeah, it was a nothing turn. And we, the boss was, um, wasn't imbued, but it didn't matter. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and do some bursting. But before we do, we're going to autocast a lot. So Melissa is going to seconds of support on Ang, seconds of support on Ang for the modifier buff. Um, we're going to beast killer on Aya, and we're going to dragon killer on Aya because she's our second highest damage dealer. Okay, so Ang is going to SLB. Aya is going to shift at LB. We're going to go to the base form with Rick and base form LB, which is higher damage and clash at max morale. And then Metsy is going to triple absolute mirror to chain with. Ricked because uh, we want to chain. And then we're going to use Elena to shift here, and she's going to just jump in here with the Bolting Strike LB in the shift form. We didn't do her setup and all that, so it's not going to be great damage, but it'll be a little bit. So we'll go ahead and chain all this up, and this should be our damage cap. And again, it's probably not going to kill the boss, but it might. Oh my god, it did. Okay, well, normally, or depending on your gear, 12.5, yeah. Depending on your gear, that might not kill the boss right there. I'll tell you what happens if you don't kill the boss and follow the turn chart. So if you don't kill the boss and the boss is at like 5% health or something, uh, the boss will heal by 20%, so he'll go back up to like 25-30% health, depending on where you, where you ended. The boss will get some buffs and do some small attacks. The attacks shouldn't kill anyone. If they are killing people and you're not, you're not able to OTK on turn 7, Give the person that's dying a source of guts. But for the most part, you should be totally fine. Um, then you're going to be on turn 8. So just follow the turn chart. On turn 8, you're going to triple cast Bar Blizzage in the base form. You're going to triple cast Bar Blizzage on Elena. And you're going to triple cast Bar Darkja on Melissa. That'll fill 60 LB gauge for the entire party. That'll maximize the LB gauge of Rick, Ang, and Aya. Then you just repeat and go again. You use Rick's base form LB, Aang's regular LB, Aya's shifted LB, and Metsy will triple absolute mirror. You do a second burst. You've still got your, um, you're still in chance mode. You've still got all the fields and the buffs and all that. So you're going to do like 40 to 50% on the second burst, and you're going to kill the boss. So that's what you do if you don't kill it on turn 7. You kill it on turn 8 instead, and you'll still get a perfect score. So here's the damage breakdown. Like I mentioned, Aang is by far the carry for this clear. 
Um, Aya Brea and Rick are just damage dealers. Aya does have focus, so that's a very good thing there. Um, and hey, Elena did a, you know 1.1 billion on the burst turn, even though we didn't do her setup. So it helps. It helps. Um, and usually I wasn't using Elena to burst on turn seven, which is why I wasn't killing her on turn seven. Maybe with Elena bursting on turn seven, you always kill it on turn seven. Who knows? In any case, if you don't kill it on seven, kill it on turn eight. It doesn't matter. And then Metsy, there you go. So, okay, I'll show you the gear and all that. Oh, Red Pearl. Um, You know, honestly speaking, I'd rather take it over a Red Pearl, just for that chance of something good, <laughs> that, that one, one in a million chance. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and show you the gear with all modifiers turned on. Okay, I think I went over unit swaps at the beginning of the video. I don't remember. In case I didn't, real quickly, um, if you don't have Elena use Abigail. If you don't have either of them, use your best magical tank, whoever it may be. Um, Melissa is relatively important here for the three turn imbue. This party might need some more changes if you don't have Melissa. Th same thing for Aang. Aang is kind of a big deal. You don't need EX3. EX2 is totally fine, and I showed you the turn chart and EX2 rotation just in case. Um, Ayabrea and Rick are just damage dealers, so your best damage dealer you can. Um, and then Metsy is a Breaker, and Peril Field, and Focus Plus. Um, and you need someone to have Focus Plus in the party and someone else to have regular Focus for this strategy. So for this one, uh, Aya is our regular Focus and Metsy is our Focus Plus. I'll show you the gear. So you want full status immunity on the whole party, or at the very least, immunity to the important ones like Petrify, Confusion, Paralyze, and Sleep. Uh, the boss does poison too, but, you know, you don't really need poison immunity. Anyway, you want some water and dark resist on your tank. Uh, we don't have that much on Elena. It doesn't really matter. The boss is easy. Uh, so there you go. So we're passive provoking with Elena. Uh, there's the setup. Now you want some physical bulk as well. Notice we're only at 9,700 physical bulk or defense. Um, and that's why Elena got hit pretty hard some turns. Uh, Abigail's way better at that, but it worked. And then we got the uh, the Omni Tank card. Shift form is damage. We geared her for you know bursting. There's the setup. She's uh, not quite maxed on killers, but I mean she's pretty pretty high. Uh, 250 beast, 250 aquatic, and maxed out dragons. I mean hey she's she's pretty close. Melissa, the gear not important. I swapped Melissa to a dual wielding morale build just for more more morale gain. Um, and there you go. Other than that, whatever, status immunity, good for you. Uh, Rick in both forms, gear the same. Here's the setup. He is um, getting status immunity from Determined to Defeat the Empire. Uh, his own card, and I believe he's maxed on everything. Um, he's Overkiller maxed on Dragon. Maxed on... Oh, he's not maxed on Beast or Aqua. He's actually short on Slightly on both. In any case, it was good enough. Yeah, there you go. And there's the setup. Um, Aang right here. I'm pretty sure it's the same build as my previous run. It's the exact same build as the previous run. Um, oh, I swapped the card to make it slightly cheaper because last run I was using Hayo's card, so like we gave him um, or Verinus's card, so we gave him the, the freebie card just to make it a slightly more cheaper clear. Uh, overcapped on Beast Killer, 275 Aqua, and maxed on Dragon. Ayabrea base form morale gain, Empress Rod, Treasured Ring, the usual status immunity. Uh, shift form is right here. We're using Floral Hairpin, even though there's no attack power on it, because this does give 50 Beast and Aqua, including Physical Killer. So that, you know, for people that are hard to gear for this fight, like Aya, um, that's a source of Double Killer in the head slot. So there you go. There's the setup. Um, you know, and then we gave her a card. You can, you can give her whatever card you want, range card, etc. And she is at... Maxed Beast, Maxed Aqua, and Maxed Dragon. There you go. And then Metsy, literally who cares? Who cares? Uh, we gave him Peppermint Rod for the morale per turn. It's optional. If you don't have it, don't worry about it. Um, other than that, we did give him, give him a little bit of Water and Dark Resist, as much bulk as we could fit. He's a bad unit, but you know he gets the job done. Uh, we gave him the Mitigation of Materials as well, Status Immunity, and we gave him Melissa's card for the morale per turn. You know, he's not here for damage. He's here for his field and Focus Plus. Okay, so this time there is a turn chart in the comments. Hopefully this clear is slightly more budget than the last one. Um, but again, if you do have the units from the last clear, that one's slightly stronger. 
I mean, actually, both clears did it on turn 7, so whatever. Easy fight. Easy fight. Anyway, see you in a bit.